Hey, it's Tom, and today we're going to solve another very popular coding interview question. It's called Number of Islands, and according to reports, it was very popular during the coding interview in Google. So let's go to the problem. The problem is, given a 2D grid map of ones, land, and zeros, water, count the number of islands. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You may assume all four edges of the grid are uh, all surrounded by water. So, in general, um, let me explain you why this is a very popular question. At first, it checks if you understand the graphs. Uh, second thing is uh, it verifies if you understand the recursive functions. And the, the third reason, in my opinion, might be uh, trying to check if you understand uh, graph algorithms like uh, depth first search which we will use this time to, to, to solve this problem. So basically, <clears throat> the, the idea behind the, the solution we will use today is, uh, all in all, we have to traverse all the elements of the, um, of the matrix, of the graph. We can, we can add, assume it's a graph. And uh, when we met uh, one, then we know it's an island, we should count it as an island. And to not um, count the second one or any other uh, part of this island again, the idea is to just delete all neighbors of, of this one, which create the same island. So uh, in our idea, we'll use the depth first search algorithm. So we will try to recursively check all the neighbors of, of the one we, we met. So this will be, so if we met this first element, then we check this one and this one. And for each element, we do the same. So for, for this element, we check this, this, and this. And every time we check an element uh, that's neighbor of, of the previous one, and it's still one, we change it to zero because it should be already counted as, as an island. And uh, after going through all the elements of an island, uh, we will change them into zeros. So when the, the next element will be checked, so this element will be checked, it will be zero. And all elements of the island, which was already counted, will be also zeros. Okay, so that's that's the explanation let's go to the code and we'll try live coding so at first we need to have variable to, to get an uh, to keep a number of island let's initialize it to zero um, we can add if statement to just check if the uh, if the grid is empty so then we'll just return zero. It probably shouldn't happen, but okay, it's it's a safe. Um, and then we can uh, keep um, constant values for the width and height of the grid. That will make just easier to to use it in 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 loops and uh, in if statements later. So. Um, will be uh, zero. Yeah, because the 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 matrix we we get is just an array of arrays. So that's it. And now we, as we say. Uh, we have to traverse all the elements, so we will use a nested loop. So mm -hmm. and then we have to traverse all elements vertically, which is more than 
Switch to Plus Plus. Okay. So uh, now we have to get the elements. Let's let's call it car. So it's a grid of A and J. And the only case in which we are interested in checking that that is if the character is equal to one. Because that's an island. And then we will call yeah, let's call it depth first search. Uh, it might be easier to understand for others. Um, we'll write this method in a moment. So this one for for the current grid, uh, because it might be already changed. And then we can provide the current position. And uh, this DFS method uh, will call itself recursively. And when the, the island will be um, vanished, <laughs> changed into zeros, we can increase the number of islands. Okay, yeah. And then we can return number of islands. Okay, so now it's time to write the DFS method. DFS uh, function with a j. Okay. Mm. So, so this method will be called recursively. So at first we need to check if we are still uh, in the grid. So mm, if i is here equal zero and if it's equal oh sorry uh, i is smaller than well actually we can copy we can copy this part it won't be very efficient but still it will work uh, it's less than width and j is bigger or equal zero and j is smaller than high of the matrix and of course if this element of a, a j uh, is one because uh, if we will check some element and and it's not uh, one so there's no point to change that so okay so we have to uh, vanish this element a j and now it's the tricky part we need to call recursively the same method for all the neighbors of this element so as we said uh, if if we started with this first element and we called it uh, the DFS method for 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 this element, we'll check this element, this element, this element on the left, which which doesn't exist, and the element on the top, which also doesn't exist. So yeah, we can uh, start with the elements. Uh, from the right and going uh, as the clock so the i plus one will be element on the right That's j and then we can well actually maybe it will be easier to understand if we'll i minus one it will be element on the left and j at least look a little bit clearer, cleaner, I think. With, uh, I and J plus one, it's the element below our current element on the matrix. And the FS grid is not J minus one, it's the element above our element. So this is uh, element on the right. This is element on the left, this is element below, 
and this element is uh, a path. Um, okay, that should work, I believe. Mm, yeah, let's run the code. Okay, it looks like working. Let's submit. Yeah, that's that's pretty good the result, especially using JavaScript. So as you see, that's the probably the the, the simplest uh, solution for for this problem. As usually, uh, the source code will be linked below the video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments on YouTube. And if you have any ideas for for next problem uh, I could solve also let me know. So, see you next time. Thank you for your time. Bye.